President Trump was asked recently about the next presidential election in 2024. Take a listen. If Mike Pence runs for president in 2024, does he have your automatic endorsement? Well, it's far too. Look, I love Mike. We're running again. But, you know, you're talking about a long time, so you can't put me in that position. <laughs> but I, I certainly would give it very strong right. consideration. What was your reaction when the president said that? <laughs> you know, it, it's the greatest honor of my life to serve as vice president uh, to this president. And I'm incredibly honored that he asked me to run with him again in 2020. And what I can tell you is that statement reflects, and I reflect the fact that the only election he and I are focused on is 2020. I mean, when you look at the progress that we've made in this country, six million new jobs created, manufacturing jobs, 500,000 across this country, we've rebuilt our military. America's standing tall in the world again. Mm -hmm. More than 114 conservatives confirmed to our federal courts, two Supreme Court justices. We've made great progress building a wall on our southern border. We'll have 400 miles of wall done uh, by next year. Uh, criminal justice reform, right to try. Okay. We've made incredible progress, and uh, I can't wait to get out on the campaign trail and tell that story all across this country and help to see this president reelected in 2020, and that's all we're thinking about. As if White House officials hadn't already sold out every moral fiber of their being to serve alongside someone like Donald Trump, whose administration will be remembered for caging children and leaving Puerto Ricans for dead, and enacting a Muslim ban and equating neo-Nazis with counter-protesters, here we have Mike Pence, Trump's number two, his right-hand man, listening to audio of the president refusing to endorse him in 2024, chuckling and declaring how much of an honor this all is. Is someone flushing the... Oh no, that's just the last of Mike Pence's dignity. Here's the thing, this endorsement isn't even real. It's hypothetical. All he has to say is, sure, yeah, great. It's five years away, he'd be a Republican nominee, so it's not like it's not aligned with his party's interests. And beyond that, no one even holds Trump to any of the freewheeling stream of consciousness that he spews on a daily basis, so it's not like his endorsement of Mike Pence would be in any way ironclad. It's a gimme question, and yet still he could manage to bring himself to focus on anyone who isn't him. And yet this is a perfect encapsulation of this entire administration. Those who've opted to serve with Trump know that this isn't about serving the country or good governance or merit. It's about loyalty, period. These officials, including Mike Pence, have knowingly made the decision to serve serve not the United States, but Donald Trump, to defend him and his agenda under any and all circumstances, regardless of legality or morality. And they do so knowing that it won't even be reciprocated. The best they can hope for is for him to entertain the idea of a pardon if they end up in prison, which at this rate. But if they dare to turn on him or even give the impression of disloyalty, he'll drop them faster than a $130,000 check to a porn star for an affair he had while his wife was at home pregnant with their youngest son. That one's just for the evangelicals out there. And he's proven that on multiple occasions. He called one of his former top campaign advisors, George Papadopoulos, a low-level volunteer when he started cooperating with prosecutors against him. He said that Paul Manafort, his former campaign chairman, only worked for him for a very short time after he got caught up in the special counsel probe. And the White House claimed that Trump and Steve Bannon, his former chief strategist, weren't particularly close after Bannon's abrupt departure from the White House. Well, Sarah, were they not close by the time that he left? I'm not aware house? that they were ever particularly close. Um, uh, I would certainly say that they've spoken a few times since he left the White House, but it's not like there were regularly scheduled calls or uh, and certainly no meetings between the two of them. All of this boils down to one thing, Trump's ego. The extent to which Trump can't even fathom the spotlight turning away from him, even for a hypothetical endorsement of his own vice president half a decade away, when Trump won't even be president, or at least the law says so, is a testament to just how pervasive his narcissism is. It's why Anthony Scaramucci, perhaps one of the most charismatic members of the Trump administration, was fired after only 10 days. Trump once joked at a rally that Sarah Huckabee Sanders was getting too popular and he'd have to fire her. She's becoming too popular. I'm jealous. Sarah, you're fired! <laughs> Again, while that's clearly a joke, that's how his brain works. Because no one other than Trump would even make that connection. That if an administration official is popular by virtue of supposedly being good at her job, that the first thought that comes to mind is that she's a threat. But for Trump, 
that's exactly what it is. So while you'd think that no one should be willing to trade in their dignity to work for a malignant narcissist who's more interested in serving his own self-interest than the country's, whose only affection for those around him extends so long as they're willing to show absolute loyalty, there's always someone like Mike Pence who'd turn around and say, <laughs> you know, it's the greatest honor of my life.